All right, we're with uh, Vinny Caggiano. We are still on the Beatles, and where are we now? We're still on Abbey Road, and we're not on the hard part yet, but this is pretty hard, nonetheless. Um, we're on, uh, let me see, uh, we're on I Want You. I think I Want You is the last song on the first side of the record. And it's an interesting piece of music. It's it's all Lennon all the way through. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we see, like, as if in his early days, where he's really relying on some creative moments that really show some genius in the writing. Um, there's really interesting stuff going on in here. A lot of people say, when they heard this, a lot of people say, oh, the Beatles can play jazz and Latin, too. It kind of cops a jazz and a Latin feel, oh, but, okay. you know, Ringo wasn't that kind of drummer where he could really play jazz or Latin. <laughs> You know, um, so the bragging they did about the Beatles wasn't really true. They were they were genius composers. They weren't necessarily genius musicians like yeah. instrumentalists. Well, even he said what in the Dick Cavett interview he and y and Yoko, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I don't. He had a there was a guitar there or something like that. And Cavett, I don't know. It, I think at one some point asked him to. But, and he said, and he just admitted. He said, "I'm a horrible guitar player." Oh yeah, yeah. He, he knew that. You know, yeah. But he actually wasn't as bad as he thought either, because like the lick from uh, um, uh, what's the name of that? Maybe it's good to me. Uh, I feel fine. Yeah. Uh, he invented that that lick, and I saw live Beatle performances of him with an acoustic guitar doing that, which is really hard. Oh. I have a, tr a struggle with it, and I'm better than John in terms of guitar playing. But no, he did, he pulled out a lot of surprises, John. He really did. I know, like um, a friend of mine, Nancy. She, she some people lean toward, toward Paul, some people lean toward John. She leans toward Paul. These days, I, I am kind of too. Uh, I used to hate Paul because he was so sappy, but um, now I'm kind of. He's still brilliant. And uh, but Lennon, um, yeah, I had to explain to her that if you want to discover Lennon's true genius in the Beatles, look at the first half of their history. He wrote all the hit songs, and they were monster hits, and they were great, great mm -hmm. songs. Works of modulation, very unusual. One thing McCartney said in the in the Beatles anthology, which I kind of liked, you know, um, John was already gone, and uh, uh, he was doing a, he, he was talking about um, different people's songwriting, and he mentions John's songwriting, and he goes, you know, people people think that you know. I don't respect John's songwriting. I have a great respect for his songwriting, he said. And he said, you know, he has that quirky thing, you know, and I understood exactly what he meant. Mm -hmm. John didn't really have music theory in his blood, mm -hmm. but he had this explorative quality that made him come up with the weirdest, coolest stuff. Oh. So That may not have happened if he was more trained. Yeah, and then there you go, Steve. I mean, you know, as far as like music theory versus hunting and pecking, you know, mm -hmm. um, some people know how to hunt and peck really well. You know, they're good foragers, musically. Well, maybe it's sort of the opposite of that old rule. Maybe not knowing the rules you know, allows you to uh, break them with abandon. You don't even right. know it. So Now, the song I Want You is the one we're on right now. And um, it starts off with the... Uh... Oh, let me tune this... Using the electric guitar today, my acoustics in the uh, in the car right now, and uh, this is this uh, Tele knockoff is uh, looks exactly like the uh, Telecaster that Harrison was using on the Let It Be record. So really, I'm, I'm very I, I love this guitar. It's a cheap piece of garbage, but I love it. I love <laughs> it. I might be using it on a recording session with my jam band because it has a really pretty jazz sound. Good. All right, so uh, I want you, uh, so it starts off with that. I want to save that for last, all right, because there's a lot in there, and it's, it's really the tag of the song more than anything. So, oh, okay. Uh, so when we get into the body of the song. For some song. reason, I always, whenever I hear that, I always think of Eric Burden and the Animals. Uh, oh, House yeah, of the Rising Sun, or, you know, but that sort of, yeah. 
Oh, sure, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if that was influential in his oh. writing. That I mean, the Beatles again were the most derivative band in the world. Thank goodness they were so creative and so ingenious and so restless. Mm -hmm. I think I mentioned this before. I just listened to this song the other day. And your bird can sing. Has this incredible arabesque solo. <laughs> And so on and so forth. Had to be done with two guitars. Had to be. Huh. The Beatles don't recall this, but um, well, what was I going to say about it? You heard this the other day. Yeah, I heard it the other day. <laughs> what were you telling me about last night on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> don't get fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> and Vinny Caggiano, the fuzzy plinker. <laughs> All right, well, I... I I forget what I was going to say about that um, uh, in connection with this uh, influence. We were talking about influences and the derivative nature. Oh, I was going to say, like the Beatles, uh, for the first time, did a, a two-part guitar solo pre-written, never done before by the Beatles, right? It never happened again in the Beatles. It was a one-time thing? Yes, but the Allman Brothers made a career of doing just that. Their entire band was based on two, two guitars playing harmony. This is what made the Beatles so great. They try something once and then move on. I love that restless quality huh. about them. Well, also the Eagles do that a bit. The two guitar harmony stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like Hotel California. Is, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> it's, it's like um, in my car and at, at the apartment, I have a no jewel rule. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no wonder why you don't like you, You're not a big fan of my blues band, right? I like your band. You like my band yeah. because the drummer used to tour with Jewel, so that might prejudice oh, you. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's listen to this song and see what it's doing. <laughs> It initially starts in the key of A minor. Alright, um, so we're in the key of A minor. The song is based on a lick. This is very, by the way, this is kind of a foreshadowing of his first uh, solo album, the huh. style that he's writing in right now. Um, nothing really exciting about that section, it just stays on an A minor. Alright. Then we have the climbing. Alright, that's A minor to D C major, D major. F major, G major, A minor. So we have a whole big bunch of major chords. Right. What do we call that? Uh, it's a. I got it. What? What? What is? I was just thinking of it as you're playing it. I don't want to put you on the spot. Wandering major. Wandering right? major. Yeah. There wandering we go. major chords. And that's my not, turn. Not necessarily in the key. At all. Um, if you think of like A minor is the relative minor to the key of C major. Okay. okay? Then it's so we got a C fine, right. but then we have a D major that's not in the key of right. C. We have an F major that is in the key of C. Mm -hmm. We have a G major and that is in the key of C. Okay. So we have one chord that's slightly outside of the key of C. But if we look at it in terms of the modes, A minor to C can be it can be the Aeolian mode. It can be the uh, the Dorian mode. That's good enough for now, actually, because okay. in the Aeolian mode, we have the C, the F, and the G, because A Aeolian is of the key of C, mm -hmm. and the key of C has a 1, 4, 5 letter C, F, and G. So the only chord outside the key of C is D major, but in A Dorian, we do have a D major chord. Okay. All right. This is something I call mixing modes, and it's really useful. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? Maybe I should use the whiteboard for a sec. Sure. To show how this works. 
I don't want to get in too much detail, but just to give you an idea. Okay. So the Venice Roosters, by the way, are uh, doing a residency at the local Santinos here. So every Wednesday night we're going to be playing. Every Wednesday? We're the house band now. Hey, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, we, I, I made $7 in tips the last time I was there. Whoa. <laughs> you almost covered your tip to the waitress for the sandwich. <laughs> Actually, I got my sandwich free. Wow. So here's the Chord Family template, right? Now, we're looking at uh, A minor as a mode, all right? And A minor could sit here as a mode. Okay. It could sit here, because these are minor chords, the lowercase are minor chords. Right. Or it could sit here. Right. Right? So there, there, or there. Now, when A minor is here, we go back a whole step, we find out we're from the key of G. Okay. We go back two whole steps, we find out we're from the key of F. F, G minor, A minor. Right? You following? When A minor is in sixth position, A, B, C, we're in C major. Okay. Right? So, so what happens is, if you were to like fill out the chord family template all the way in all these keys, G, A, B minor, C major, D, possibly 7, E minor, and F sharp, diminished, or F, G, A minor, B flat, C, uh, D minor, and E diminished, and finally C, C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, B diminished. What happens is we have our A minor root chord, right? Okay. So in this case we have, uh, in the case of when we're from C, in the case of uh, I want you, we have A, C, and we also have F and G, right. right? So we definitely borrowed a lot of chords from this key. But there's no reason you can't mix uh, chords from other modes and other keys when you have the same minor chord in common with three modes oh, okay. in different positions. So that D major chord, boom, comes right out of here. Notice it's the second step of the key of G. That makes it Dorian. Okay. This is the sixth step of the key of C. That makes it Aeolian. Aeolian. Right. So this is a good songwriting trip. I call it mixing modes. It's great for composers. If you, instead of hunting and pecking for chords, you could do this. Okay. All right. Uh, and of course, Lennon didn't know that. He just played. Yeah. Again, Paul McCartney, John Lennon, Wes Montgomery, great, great, great musicians. Didn't know anything Beans about, about music it. Theory. And I'm sure there's a bunch more. You know, Jeff Beck, as amazing as the guy is, he doesn't know what scales he's playing. Oh, is that right? Uh, the guy from Pantera, uh, as much as I don't like that band, that guy does some really abstract, weird scales, and I thought he learned jazz scales. But he just kind of makes stuff up and plays, <laughs> uh, which is, you know, kind of neat in a way. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. My feeling is this. You expose yourself to as much music theory as possible. Really get it into your system. Get it into your bloodstream. And this is what Miles said, too. And I think it was Miles. might have been Coltrane. But he said, after that, forget. Forget it. Forget uh -huh. the music theory. Because it's somewhere in your blood now. It's somewhere in your intuition. Mm -hmm. And you have to learn to kind of... That's the Zen part of it. You have to learn to open up your mind to new possibilities without being too thinky. Just let the thing come out. You know... <clears throat> He played one instrument where he could, I mean, except for Ross on Roland Kirk, could only play one note at a time. Right. And is that an e Guitar seems like so much more complicated and convoluted and tricky to kind of figure out because lots of times you're dealing in certainly more than one, one note. All the time. There are a number of, all, all string in instruments have redundancies yeah. on them, and that's the biggest problem with string instruments. You look at all the wind instruments and the, the keyboard, you can play a G scale, it's in one place, and that's it. You have one fingering, and that's it. Mm -hmm. But I gave you the demonstration of the ten different G major scales on guitar, yeah. like I give it to you again. But, uh, you know, I show beginner students this, and I tell them, this is why music theory is hard on the guitar. <laughs> and here's the same scale, it sounds the same. I'm, you see my hands, you know, just a quick demo, I'll do it, you know. I've done it before, but... G major scale, one octave. By this point, people are like sighing. Uh. 
that no other instrument does that except stringed instruments, okay? Huh. This is the end of part one. Let's do a quick cut and we'll come back.